<laughs> What's good, good people? Vets, let's talk, man. We got a special guest in front of the formation today. First class, Jesse Rodriguez, man. Before we get started, I'd like you guys to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. If it's not for you, please share it with somebody that that it could help. We all about that transition going from one place to the other because every day that is something we do. Hey, how you doing, Top? I'm doing good, doing good. How's life treating you out there? I can't complain. I'm retired. Freaking, I live by a lake, so I'm good to go. Do you do do you miss it at times? Oh yeah, without a doubt. I thought for a minute about going to Ukraine. <laughs> hey, and, just, I'll follow you. And, and then especially the other night after I was drinking, I thought about it even more about going. <laughs> I feel you. Hey, this man right here, bro. This is one of the leaders that I follow. Like, if you see first time ride coming through the door, just get ready to get in the front lead and rest, man. Hey, let me tell you, this is a leader amongst leaders, direct and straightforward. Hey, so how's the family doing? They're doing good. Um, it's just my wife and I in the house because all the kids are gone. So that's a good thing. Yeah. You, did you did you have a, a, a kid that get into joined the military? I had two. Uh, oh. My son was in the army for eight years and my daughter was in the army for four years. My son was in the infantry. And my daughter was a medic. Yeah, I knew I knew one of them. I didn't know both. Both went in. Wow. So, you know, let's let's get on with this because uh, everybody has a story about 9-11. Do you remember where you were during that time? Um, during 9-11, I had just left uh, Fort Hood. I was in uh, 4th ID. I was in uh, 122 Infantry. So, and I had a platoon then. Um, I just left there and I went to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And I was uh, doing ACRC, which is training the National Guards. And uh, we trained Infantry National Guards. So I was at Jackson um, that day. That morning, um, I started watching, I was watching the news after PT and after I was getting ready and stuff before I went back to work. And then I was watching uh, the news then, the breaking news. Saw the planes hit the tower. Um, I figured right away it was terrorist. Um, and then from there, I went to work with all the other uh, guys that I work with and we were just watching the news the whole day. So we knew we were getting ready to get busy because like I said, we, we trained the uh, Infantry National Guard. And so all the units that were gonna deploy, which they all got the call quick and we just started training them from there for the next three years to deploy. Wow. So you said you was at Fort, how many times have you been to Fort Hood? Because you said you was in transitioning Ooh. out of Fort Hood. And I've been to I times. How many? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four times. <laughs> wow. They they say this place is, hey, once you hear once, you always come back to it. Wow. That's a true statement. That in Korea. Wow. Hey, so like what, what do you remember about your days of service? Uh... Probably the biggest things I remember is uh, you remember all your duty stations, you know, where you've been, where you got to travel. You know, I got to go to Germany. And then when I was in Germany, I, well, I got to go to Germany a couple of times. And every time I went to Germany, I do a lot of traveling there. I've uh, been to Korea twice. Didn't do so much traveling there. But um, and then all over the States, where, wherever I've been. So you, you remember your duty stations. Um, you remember your leaders. Uh, whether good or bad, you know, what you learned from them and, and passed it on. Um, I remember when I was a drill sergeant, you know, the, the, it was quite, it was, it was quite a rewarding job to be a drill sergeant. Um, you get to break down these knuckleheads who come in the military, break them down and then build them back up to be soldiers. So that, you know, that's very rewarding. Right. Um, I remember my deployments you know, everywhere where I've been deployed, who I deployed with, uh, you know, the soldiers you lose. Mm. Um, so you definitely remember that. You remember the suck that was over there. Right. And you remember the, probably the biggest thing that I remember for the military is the camaraderie. Um, once you leave the military, unless you hang out with veterans or, or other soldiers, 
you lose that camaraderie. Uh, civilians don't get it, you know. Yeah. They don't get us. So that's that's probably one of the biggest things. I mean, and and in dealing with camaraderie, also though, you know, people you haven't seen in forever. Once you see them again, it's like you never stop seeing them. This is true. Because that's how close you are. Right. That's so true. It's like I still I still talk to all those guys in the uh, Ghost Rider platoon. That even yeah. AOT, I still talk to him. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He's he's got like a billion kids now, but yeah. <laughs> I still talk yeah. to him. Gidry, Hurt, Hutton. Good. I think that's the good. only I think the only person I don't is. I'm not gonna mention the name, but I think you already know who it is, but there's only one person I don't really talk to that much. Yeah. But you know, like, what were some of the fears transitioning out of the military, if any? Oh, I had fears, believe me. I mean, you know, when when you've done something for, I did it, I was in the army for 24 years. And um, so when you do something for a good minute, you know, when you get back out, you know, in the civilian world, it, you have a lot of fears. You know, some of the things I, I was worried about was dealing with civilians, you know, cause I know how I was as a leader in the army, you know, I was, I was pretty tough, I thought. But, um, so, you know, you can't talk to civilians like you talk to soldiers, you know, you'll, you'll be in jail or you'll be in the <laughs> office every day. So that, that was one big thing. Um, Another thing was, uh, what else? Ah, you know, dealing with everything the military will offer you once you get out, you know, not knowing it. You know, I did 24 years and I didn't know nothing when I was getting out, you know? Right. I, I, you know, you don't know, you know, you, you have to learn how to, use the VA system, how to work with your disabilities, you know? So my fear when I got out is, who am I gonna to talk to, to, you know, to figure out how to learn how to do stuff? Yeah. So, you know, I started using some of the courses on the outside, like uh, the Texas Veterans Commission. Uh, was it that uh, Disabled Americans uh, Veteran, was it DAV? Yes. So, you know, that, that's another big fear is once you get out, you know. You're on your own. Yeah, you're on your own. Yeah, if you can't, if you don't help yourself, ain't nobody gonna help you. Right. So, I mean, you know, that's a big fear for soldiers nowadays, especially with, you know, everybody gets out with some type of disability for the most part. So, you know, you have to learn the system before you get out. Before you get out. <laughs> um, and another big fear was having a plan. You know, you got to have a plan when you get out. So it's a big fear on what you're going to do. You know, when you're in the military, or the army, you have a plan every day. You know, you're told what you're going to do every day. You know, and so you do it. And then when you get out, it's you making your plan and you and uh, enforcing it. Right. And that's 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 huge. And a lot of people don't understand. Like it's I keep saying it, I shoot these transitional videos for a reason to kind of prepare folks, you know, keep the plan in, in your forefront of your mind at least six months out. But let's let's jump into this next yeah. once once out. How hard was it to adjust to civilian life? Woo! You know, when I got out, I didn't even um, think about getting a job in the civilian world. Um, I went straight to contracting. Right. Think twice about doing contracting because I knew I could not, with, with where I was still at, and you know, uh, I couldn't get out and talk to civilians. So... You know, that's why I went straight into contracting because I didn't want to deal with it. Oh, wow. Another thing was, you know, after you get out, after being somebody for so long or, you know, being a soldier, you know, you get out and all of a sudden you're nobody. Right. You know, you're back to being nobody. You know, being a revelant is, is, is a hard thing. And so, you know, I had to deal with that too. You know, when I was uh, had the civilian contracting job, I worked by myself for the most part, you know, with units, but um, you still feel like you're nobody anymore, you know? Yeah, that's, that's right. I think that's a question I didn't even really put on the panel. It's like, cause you, was a, you were a first sergeant. So coming from such a position of leading so many troops and caring for so many people and being in charge of so much, 
equipment, like like putting together agendas for 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 the for the soldiers and all that. I mean, that had to be it had to be some depressing times for you. Yeah, you, know, you you got you sit there and yell at the dogs because that's how you feel at. Them yell at you. She yells back, right? So, you know, got to yell at the dogs a lot. Hey, so okay. Do you do you think the military gives you the tools to be motivated, even though if it, it doesn't seem like it? Because I, you know, somebody somebody put it in my ear that you had cancer at one point. Yeah, yeah, I um, I got I had two types. I have two types of cancer. I have a blood cancer, and then a carcinoid tumor. Um, you know, the military gives you all the tools you need. You know, you may not use them every day. Well, no, in the military you use them every day. It's just you just don't realize you're using them. So when you get out, you know, the things that they give you, you know, discipline. The discipline that you get in the military will take you everywhere you want to go. Civilians don't have that discipline. So, you know, you're above, you're already starting in front of them by having that discipline. You know, you're, you know, something's got to get done, you get it done. These civilians make all kinds of excuses, you know, on why they can't get it done. Right. So, you know, discipline, you know, the leadership that you get, no matter what rank you get out of the military, believe it or not, you have leadership skills, you know? Um, you know, a lot of you fours have been team leaders. So you were leading soldiers, you know, even if you were never a team leader and you're that specialist who had privates under you, you still let them, you know, you showed them what they needed to do, you know, either by example or, you know, however, which way you taught them, but, you know, you still have leadership skills. Um, your work habit. You, you go out into the civilian world, you're a star, you know, with your work habit. Um, the, the, I don't know if these young soldiers realize that when they get out, how much, you know, work habit they have, but, right. you know, see how hard military dudes work versus how, you know, civilians, they don't know how to work that hard. No. You know, I'm not saying all of them, but I mean, you're, you're way ahead of about 80% of civilians once you get out from that. Right. Um, flexibility. You're able to adapt to anything. You know, look at the stuff the army throws at you every day. You're supposed to be doing one thing and all of a sudden you get thrown into another whole thing. You know, so the flexibility that you learn from the military also puts you ahead of the civilian world. And then the last thing, embrace the suck. <laughs> you know, you've been in the military for a couple of days. You embrace the suck, you know. You're out in the field, it's cold, it's raining, it's miserable. You're not getting to eat because child's late, freaking whatever training you're doing, you're soaking wet, cold, you know. So you embrace the suck in the military every day. Right. If you can embrace the suck in the military, put it in the civilian world. You know, whatever life throws at you, embrace it. Don't dwell on it. Embrace it. Embrace. And, and move on. Put one foot in front of the other from it. You know, that's all you do. Put one foot in front of the other. And, and that's what I did with the cancer. When they told me, you know, I have, you know, I had all these conditions and stuff. I just embraced it. And, and you know, there was no reason to dwell on it, you know, and I knew it wasn't going to kill me. So it's like, you know, I just started putting one foot in front of the other. And, I, you know, a lot of the doctors I had would sit there and say, how are you taking this so well? And I go, I've had worse than the army. You know? At first, I think, you know, people don't really understand that. It's like when I go through certain situations, it's not like cancerous, but it'd be some bad, some real horrible situations. And they're yeah. like, how are you dealing with that? And I just look at them like, hey, <laughs> one boom would do a lot to you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and these young soldiers that get out every, you know, every day and, don't, you know, they, they've got to learn to use the skills that they use every day in the military. They don't realize they have them. I guess they just forget they have them. And, you know, and they start embracing it. You know, they don't embrace the suck. They dwell on the suck and kills them. You know, it just tears them up. Right. You know, they got to learn to put their skills to use that they learn. And, you know, and you, and you said something about no matter what rank you are, when you, when you get out, you have some form of leadership skills. I didn't even really think of it like that. 
even as a PFC, like they're putting you in charge of something. You, re- yeah. you might not understand it because yeah. they always tell you to check up before you check down in a sense of follow or, or, or be the rank that you're trying to receive. So with that being said, you can come out and apply for a managerial yeah. position and be like, yeah, you know, I did this, 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 and this. But you, you got to know how to transform that into civilian language. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a hard thing to deal with is how to transform. Because that was one of the big things I had a fear of was transitioning my infantry to a real world job. There's no such animal, you know? So, you know, it's, it's like you just said, you got to be able to write up, your, you know, build yourself up. You got to build yourself up on your resumes and, you know, put all the things you did and all those things that I was saying, you have them right. and, and lawyers want that. Yeah. And I say about probably, like we say, about six months to a year out, you know, you're getting out, start changing your language right there. Yes. Once, once you figure out like, oh, six months. Okay. Even if you have a thought, you need to get in your head of what type of stuff you need to transition to that paper and be like, okay, I, instead of saying this, I need to say this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that, that was a, a big problem. I mean, you, you know how I talked when I was out there. and uh, yeah, there ain't nobody talking like that in the civilian world. <laughs> he damn sure right about that Tom. <laughs> so, so, okay. What, what advice would you give to someone transition out of the military? The biggest thing, plan, plan, plan. You got to have a plan. You know, I, 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 I you know, and it, even with my kids, I, I tried to make sure they had a plan before they got out. You know, you know, you got to, like you said, six months out, you've, you've got to be start to, uh, you got to start enrolling in school. You got to know where you're going to go. You know, you, you've got to surround yourself with veterans or people that are in the military. You can't go back home to the, all your knucklehead friends back home who have no clue who you are. You know, you got you got to surround yourself with the right people. You got to go to a, a veteran friendly state, you know, Texas. I love Texas. They love, you know, they love our, they love their veterans. So, you know, this is all the things that you need to be thinking about, you know, even a year out, you know, where are you going to go when you get out? what state, you know, where you, you're going to go back home to them knuckleheads or you're going to, you know, try to uh, move forward. So planning, you know, that's number one thing. You got to have a plan, you know, don't wait to go to school, say I'm going to go to school and then get out and then, uh, well, you know, I'm too busy chilling. And, you know, as soon as you get out, you, you've got to be going soon, you know, um, let's see. Educate yourself. You got to educate yourself before you get out. You got to educate yourself on the VA, yeah. what your uh, rights are when you retire, you know, when you get out, whether you're just you know, doing your four years, your GI Bill, you know, you got to know all that stuff. You got to, I mean, those briefings that you get when you, when you're, when you're PCS and or ETS and or whatever, got to listen to them. I didn't listen to them. <laughs> You know, they give you a lot of good information and, and, and where to go to get even more information. So, I mean, you got to really listen to those things so you can educate yourself on everything because you have so many benefits that people don't use, you know, that, that you're entitled to. You, sh- you need to use them. You did your you did your time in the military. You serve for your country. Your country should repay you some. Hmm. Um, yeah, this but the biggest thing, like I said, is, is having a plan. You right. got to. Plan. And he said something big about the education portion because I think about six months before me getting out of the military, I was already putting in paperwork to go to school. As soon as I got out the military, it's like the next day or the next or the second day out, I started school because I had to make sure that I was going to have some type of income coming in. Even, you know, I, <laughs> you got to keep it rolling because like after the military, you're going to, let me say this, finances, at least save up two months of your check if you're getting out. Yeah. Because it's going to be at least two months to where you're not going to see your last check from the military. But at the same time, if you're going to school, start your school enrollment before you get out so that money can kick in 
the without next, a doubt the next month so you can have something to fall back on and yeah because like I've seen so many people have issues with uh, getting their GI Bill. You know, it, they'll get it, but the first couple of months, you know, they have problems with it sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, without that, you got to have you know some money saved before you get out. Always stay on top of what you're doing. You got hey, you got something motivational to say to these folks before we sign up out of here? I know you gave the, like the advice, but something to, like keep people on top of who they are because you know I, you you the, I'm, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> you know um you've you've learned so many skills in the military you know just make sure you use them you know um you just no matter how bad it gets when you get out keep putting one foot in front of the other that's it that's it. and embrace it up and it don't dwell on it Embrace it. Embrace the damn suck, man. That's it, man. I appreciate. Hey, I appreciate you for giving me some of your time. You know, this means a lot. Like I was like, I was kind of hesitant. And like, man, I want to get some first on ride on here. Like, man, because he was like the leader to me. Like he walked through. So like I say, if when you see him coming, you just get ready for the front lead rest. Like I, I actually seen this man as a leader, leader. I'm like, damn, look at, look how he maneuvers. Yep, that's respect right there. Well, it was definitely an honor to do it with you. You're doing good stuff. And so when you asked me, I was honored. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man, this, hey, this is best let's talk, man. Hey, always stay in the point of change of something in your life. Who's up next for formation? You know, these things are meant to not only help veterans, but civilians as well. It kind of teaches you to go from one point to the next. Hey, who's up next? I need y'all in front of this formation to talk to these people. It ain't nothing but it's all about help. That's all it's about. Like, 